Good afternoon. Welcome to our Bible study, Reflection Part 1. And give me five minutes of your time as we will talk about the grammatical. So, now, grammatical uh, interpretation. Then, a good exegetical procedure dictates that the details in light of the total context. This ability, the ability to state what each section of the book is about and how the paragraph in each section contribute to that argument is one of the most critical steps according to Kaiser. So, ang, ang gagawin natin ngayon ay bago natin patuloy na patalakayin yung mga paragraph context. So, doon muna, himayin muna natin sa pamagitan ng, magbigay ako na example sa inyo ng gram, grammatical interpretation. The next meeting, pag-uusapan natin yon kung paano yan i-apply doon ang relation ng context sa pinaka perikopi. So, for example, itong Hebrew words na koper, kiporim, and kaporet, which are translated respectively, redemption, or atonement, and mercy. So, ito yung mga uh, word na ang root word niya ay kapar, meaning to cover, and contains the idea of a redemption or atonement brought about by a certain covering. O kaya, pag-aralan nyo yung salitang church na sa Grigo ay Ecclesia. Yan ay nagbula sa ik and kaliin. So, yung designation ng church, both in the Septuagint at in the New Testament, and points to the fact that this consists of a people that is called out, out of the world in special devotion to God. So, ito namang Isaiah 53, 53 verse 2. Kung pag-aaralan nyo, tatlong salita ang mahalaga dyan. Yung to are, ito yun, the first word to are, meaning form. So ano ito? Uh, with the added idea of beauty and therefore refers to a beautiful bodily form, compare this with 1 Samuel or 1 Samuel 16 verse 18. Then, the next word is hadar. No? Hadar designates an ornament and as applied to God is descriptive of majesty. It refers to the way in which the Lord appeared among men other than to his physical form. So he manifested himself in a state of humiliation. Third word from this verse na bibigyan niyo na pansin kung sa pag na mare. No? to see or uh, sometimes refer to an external appearance which is the expression of and therefore in harmony with an inner essential being. So the meaning of the prophet seems to be that the external appearance of the Lord was not what the Jews expected of the Messiah. So napakahalaga na pag-aralan natin yung Bible, gamit natin ang grammatical. So, nag-live ako sa Facebook na karaan at yung pinokos ko doon ay theological at saka liter literary. So now, itong word, for example, na love sa John 3.16, pupukusan nyo sa pag-aaral yan. So, the word love from the Greek, igapisin. So, kung tingnan nyo ang case system niya, Kung pa paano siya, uh, tapos yung, uh, no, uh, yung modal, mood system, no? yung pinaka, ano niya, yung, kasi verb ito, na kung saan, <coughs> itong verb na ito, ang kahulugan niya ay erestens, kung himay-himay natin, erestens, indicative mode, active voice, tapos, yan ay third person singular. So, pag sinabi mong eres tense, ibig sabihin, totoong nangyayari. Oo, oh, nangyayari na sa history. So, pag sinabi mong indicative mode, 
ay talagang yan ay realidad. Active. So, ibig sabihin, guma, hanggang ngayon, epektibo itong pag-ibig na ito, tumatalab sa tao. Third person singular, he. No? Kasi refers to God. So, ibig sabihin, siya lang ang pinagmulan ng pag-ibig na ito at wala ng iba. Kaya ganun kahalaga ang pag-aaral sa kahit isang salita sa Bible na kung saan ito'y makapagbigay ng kahulugan. Purihin ang Diyos at salamat sa inyong maiksing panahon at sa susunod uli ng ating Bible Study Reflection. God bless you all.